of all of you can see my screen here. Yeah. So basically what I have here, and just to give you a quick overview of, of, of how I frame this particular scenario, um, basically have a have a data warehouse. Okay. Essentially just these are the different systems. Okay. Now what is the whole point of SFIS? Now, so so the scenario here is, and even before we go into those those those, those concepts, and the base scenario that I wanted to talk about here is um, you have data coming. Uh, let's say ABC is a uh, is, is a multinational financial uh, pharmaceutical company. Okay, ABC is a is a multinational pharmaceutical company, uh, which which produces its own medicines and it basically sells its medicines across different retail outlets. Okay, uh, so let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and all the different retail outlets spread across the world for company ABC. And um, uh, the, uh, and what it basically ha what it basically means is that uh, uh, let's say retail outlet one is maintaining its, its entire sales data in an Excel file. So so what retail outlet one does is at the end of every day, uh, depending on the number of sales that it makes, it basically goes ahead and um, maintains that that track record in an Excel sheet. Like it says, okay, entry number one, invoice day, invoice number so and so, um, medicine name so and so, amount so and so. That's it. Simple record. But then they maintain that record in an Excel file. Okay, uh, let's say Retail Outlet 2 maintains that data in a SQL server. Uh, they have a SQL server database that they maintain. Retail Outlet 3 maintains the data in an Oracle database. Retail Outlet 4 can maintain the data in a simple notepad file. Okay, it could be a simple CSV kind of format where they maintain that data. Retail Outlet 5, let's say, maintains the data in a DB2. So what I'm basically highlighting here is that um, different different organizations or different retail outlets here in this case can store data in in different formats right like there's so many different kinds of data formats in which you can store your data and but the but the end objective is that if if, if company abc wants to know uh, what was the total sales that that accumulated over the past 5 years it, it basically needs to pull in that information across all the retail outlets right there has to be a mechanism through which company ABC also knows that information because right now that, that data is maintained individually across the different vendors. Now, I understand it's a very a simplistic scenario and it's not exactly happens that way, but assuming that you know the other infrastructures are not in place, that, that's how it will happen, right? Because ABC has given us medicines, it will probably have its own record, I agree, but then uh, how, how do you know how much of medicine was actually sold? There has to be a mechanism through which uh, uh, retail outlet one communicates back to A uh, communicates back to the company that okay hey so on this particular day or across the past one year over the past one year i sold so much so this when this was my sales so so how does abc know that and, and the only way to understand it the only way to effectively and efficiently do that is through uh, is, is by is by building a central data warehouse okay um again i will not talk about database right now because we've already gone over database it's, we're not exactly talking about a data, database here because uh, the idea here is again for management reporting Management wants to know. Uh, ma management wants to, uh, you know, you know, do analytics on this. Management wants to know which were the regions which, which, which contributed the most to the sales of my uh, medicines, uh, across which age groups were my uh, medicines the biggest hit. So management wants to fire select queries, and for select queries, you're basically doing a data warehouse. So essentially, the idea is to build one central data warehouse. Okay. So from multiple different source systems, your data is coming in to ABC. And ABC is building a data warehouse, uh, a data warehouse on a single platform. And this this part is important. You are basically building a data warehouse platform. Data warehouse is ultimately a database, and as as I showed you here, you know it it's basically a kind of a database which you maintain in a SQL Server or an Oracle or whichever system that you take. Okay. So although you have data coming in from different kinds of uh, systems, different data formats, you are converting everything into a SQL Server data warehouse. I'm just I'm just considering an example of a SQL Server data warehouse as an example. Okay, and which is something I've highlighted here. This is what you're building. This is company ABC, and company ABC decides to build its own SQL Server data warehouse. That's what that's what I've showed you in the cylinder, right? So you, again, you have data from multiple formats. Come retail outlet one, two, three, four, five, six. You can have different retail outlets. You're basically bringing in all that data. You're doing ETL, and this is the part which we call ETL. We call it extract, transform, and load. Uh, extract. What, what does extract mean? Extract means that you're extracting that data from the source system. That's extract, right? You're extracting from the source. You're extracting from the source. Transformation means that you know, I'm going to transformation on your data, right? The T stands for the transformation, and transformations could be anything. Transformations could be uh, something like, let's say, you have names, right? You have, you, have, you have a name of a person, and you want to convert that name into capital letter. Let's say there's a, there's a business requirement based on which typically mobile numbers come. Uh, typically mobile numbers come uh, uh, like let's say there's, there's a country code that is added like there's a plus four four or plus nine one 
or plus seven zero. There's a country code that always precedes the mobile number. And as part of a business, so and and what company and what retail outlet one does is when they store their data in an Excel file, they basically store that data along with that country code. Okay, so so uh, let's say when when uh, retail outlet two stores this data, it doesn't store the country code. When retail outlet three three stores that data. It stores the data in a completely different format. Okay, let's say it, it has phone numbers as uh, numbers, which which is ideally not the case. Phone number should be a character data, right? So so again, what I'm highlighting here is that you have data which is present in different different varieties, right? So the E part, the extract part, is just going to extract the data, but it is only the T part, the transformation part, which is going to try to bring some kind of similarity across the different data formats. It is going to try to Take those multiple different data formats and try to convert them to a single unified data format. So essentially, if you have if, if you have phone numbers which are stored in different ways across all the different systems, you're going to define a unified convention uh, along with business. Okay, this is how we're going to store phone numbers, and that is how you're going to do your transformation in T part. And finally, you're going to load the L stands for load to a data warehouse. That's that paper, and this is exactly what we performed using SSI. All the different transformations that you use. And if you can recall our discussion on derived column transformation, or some of the conditional splits that we, and all of it was about making sure that you, that you know you're able to convert uh, different kind of formats into one single format, okay, for for a proper load into a SQL Server data warehouse, okay. So this is the part of the ETL and SSI step, and just to just to take a quick uh, digression at this step, and just to show you. Uh, kind of some of the examples of transformations. Some of you might be confused what I'm talking about about transformations. And just, just to just to quickly show you another Excel sheet that I prepared here, and um, take an example here. This is what I was exactly mentioning. So you can have you can have two tables here. You have two tables. Uh, you can see the first table. This this let's say this is this is retail outlet one. Let's assume that this is retail outlet one. Uh, retail outlet one's data is stored in an Excel file. It's an Excel sheet that it stores the data in, and it maintains gender as male, female, male. Okay, it it calls gender as male, female, male, and then you have retail outlet two, which also has the exact same three columns, but then it calls its gender as M F F, which is very evident, isn't it? Because these are diff these are different retail stores. You know, something can be based in different geographical parts of the world, and they they will have their own conventions. Okay, and I'm I'm calling calling a retail outlet. These could be entire departmental stores altogether. Okay, this can even be something like a Walmart, which has its own, you know, old TP setup and other, right? So different different organizations will have their own different formats. And and what I want to do is, and as you can see that here, gender is either M or F, right? It could be anything. This is the business convention that you define. This is the convention that you're defining. So when you're pulling in data from this table and this table, when you're pulling in data from retail outlet one and two, and you're loading that. Into your uh, organizational enterprise data warehouse, you are defining your set of business rules, and these are what your business rules are. That all right, so my gender is going to be either an M or an F. So uh, now all you have to do is, and you can understand, it's a very simple transformation that you will do, right? So, and what is the transformation that you can do here? You can simply do a derived column transformation, right? So you can you can simply do a derived column. Use use a ternary operator. We we've talked about this, right? It's a simple ternary operator you can use, a question mark and semicolon, a question mark and colon. And you can give a condition if my gender is equal to male, then it is M, else it is F, right? Simple check you can do to transform. That's a transformation stage. So extract, transform, and load. That's your ETL part, okay? And country without country code. It's again a very simple thing that you can do. All you can do is um, you, you can simply do a substring because ultimately it's a character, right? When you're reading data from an Excel file, it's a character. What you can do is you can do a substring, or you can use the uh, you can probably use the write function. And you can, if you go to derive column again in derive column transformation, you'll find something called a write function. And what the write function does is uh, it, it'll ask you for the field name. So basically, your field name is going to be contact, and 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 it's going to be like contact comma. You can be doing contact comma ten. So it's going to take the rightmost ten characters. Okay. Similarly, of the left function, left mo left function will take the leftmost ten characters. So that that's how you can that's how you can trim the country code and other such irrelevant details from your contract. Okay, this is what I wanted to highlight about transformation. Now, coming to the final steps of reporting. Now, once my data warehouse is ready, what 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 I need to do is I need to do reporting, right? Because that's the end objective. That that's what the data warehouse is built for, right? I need to I need to be able to do efficient reporting on top of whatever data warehouse I created. So you can either do reporting straight away from an Excel file. And this is something I've already showed you guys. I've showed you how to connect Excel to a data warehouse. You can simply open up an Excel sheet. You can go to uh, you can go to data other sources. You can connect to a data warehouse. You can directly do reporting from here. 
which is absolutely fine. Okay, and it's not only Excel. You can have other reporting tools. You can have something like uh, um, SSRS. You can have SSRS also directly connect to an X, a SQL Server data warehouse to generate reports. You can have uh, Tableau connect to SQL Server data warehouse directly. So you can you, this, this this up to this point you know, for reporting. You can directly do reporting from it. But the fundamental reason for building the cube is uh, to ensure that. You, 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 you have your aggregates are pre-calculated aggregations take a lot of time just as I said for joins joins take a lot of time aggregations also take a lot of time because if you have your fact table which has rows in billions of rows and if you have to do a group by and if you do a sum across all the different permutations and combinations of different attributes which are possible okay because there are so many possibilities you can just think about it I mean if you just look at seven dimension tables and each dimension table has four attributes uh, each dimension table has four attributes you have a total of 28 attributes and for 28 attributes each attribute combination you can think of the aggregation that you would take okay leaving out the key columns okay you can have to think of okay so sum of sales for each region comma year sum of sales for each region comma month sum of sales for each for each region comma month comma year sum of sales for each region comma month comma year comma quarter sum of sales for each region comma gender comma month comma year so you can just think of so many different kinds of uh, permutations and combinations that are possible for aggregations and and that is what a cube is basically used for it it, it, it stores those aggregates in advance so, and that's why we call pre-calculated aggregate so those, those, those things are already stored in the queue so next time when you want to uh, fetch some data and some aggregated data you can directly get it super fast in, in, in almost in very fast uh, turnaround time uh, from the queue okay so that's the that's the intermediate step that we create and this is something that you create using SSAs okay and again you can use the OLAP queue to directly connect to Excel or SSRS or Tableau or any other reporting or visualization tool for that matter and you can directly uh, create charts and graphs from it Okay, and one of the only major benefits here is that you have improved performance. So I basically wanted to highlight the OLTP. You have so many different tables, and essentially it becomes a mess. And what I was trying to say here is, uh, in a typical OLTP system, you know things become very, very complicated. You have hundreds and thousands, literally hundreds. I won't say thousands, but then typically hundreds of tables. And again, so something that we that we'll again talk about uh, once I once I discuss a little bit about data uh, facts and dimension tables is that for each fact table. And for each dimension table load, essentially for each table load, when you're when you're transferring data from source to staging, source to staging, and so on, for, for each of these instances, you will have separate packages. Okay, you will have separate packages. If you have four tables here, you will have four tables created in your SQL Server. You will have four different packages defined for that. And again, for for four of those tables, if you if you're creating, let's say, uh, three two fact tables and one dimension table, that's like two plus one three, so three packages. Two packages for the for the dimension tables and one package for the fact table. So, so, the, so the thumb rule is that we typically create uh, separate packages for fact tables and dimension tables each. Okay, so the two dimension tables you will have you will create two two separate packages for each dimension table. Okay, it's a thumb rule. Again, it's not I mean, it's something that we follow, but then uh, things could be different as well. Okay, but but then please please keep in mind that everything, whatever you do, everything is fine is triggered from one master package. So you, you have separate packages for. Uh, the different components, the different uh, workflows, but then you have one master package from which all those individual packages are triggered. And how do you do that? Execute package task, right? We we all understand how to execute execute package task. You can take a master package, and from that master package, all that will control con contain the control flow is all those execute package tasks. Okay. So the first execute package task will be okay. So execute package this to this. 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 And once all that is over, you probably put put all of that inside a inside a um, uh, probably call a container. Okay, you put that inside a container. Sequence container will be the right thing to use here because you want to make sure that everything is successfully completed. And after that, only once the source to staging is successfully completed, only then will you want to move from staging onto a destination. Right? Then you will go back and slowly start to have separate packages, package calls again using execute package tasks from each staging table onto the corresponding destination tables. Okay, so that is how we broadly implement this as part of our uh, as part of SSIS project. Okay. Um, all right. So. All right. So that's basically what I wanted to cover you. The idea here is to again to highlight the importance of uh, uh, the complete framework and MSBI, of course, is something that I initially started off saying is. Um, the overall workflow remains very similar for different ETL tools. So depending on what you use, whether you use Informatica, Data Stage, whatever you use, the, the broad workflow remains the same. Okay, but please understand one thing I do wanted to talk about. One thing I wanted to talk about: the initial modeling happens far uh, way back in way in advance. Okay.
when I talk about modeling, the modeling phase is where you actually identify uh, what are your fact tables, what are your dimension tables. So all this while I'm saying that you're loading data from your source onto your destination data warehouse, but then uh, where do you load that data? You will load data either into your fact table or a dimension table, and where you load that data really depends on how you have modeled your data warehouse, and which is something that you do uh, as the very first step. So even before you start all this, all of this, at the very beginning of the project, you will go back and you will try to you'll try to model your data warehouse. Okay, and you basically sit with the business, try to understand, you know, uh, what is it that they want to achieve, what are the reporting needs, because the fundamental purpose of building a data warehouse is to answer analytical queries. And again, this is going back to the to the initial thing that I've highlighted. You can see it. It, it this is what. This is what you, it is ideally suited for report is complete support for all analytical queries. So that's the, the first step that is undertaken uh, before building a data warehouse. So understand what kind of queries you want to answer. And it is based on that that you design a data warehouse. And only once you design a data warehouse is where you can kick off that ETL process. Okay, now because now you know how to map that corresponding source table, that corresponding OLTP Excel file or, or an OLTP source table onto that corresponding fact table or a dimension table. Right, so that's about an overview. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPath.